Isaiah 9-6 is used by Oneness Pentecostals in a vain attempt to claim that Jesus is God the Father. The verse reads like so, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Hebrew words, I don't speak Hebrew, but I've looked up the words in the dictionary, are Pele for Wonderful, Yoitz for Counselor. Most people um, insist that these are two separate words, but a few people run the words together. The wonder of the counselor might be a possible interpretation, but most scholars would say no, two separate words. Wonderful and counselor. Because you see, Isaiah 9-6 is describing the character of the future Messiah. What the future Messiah is going to be like. We then have El Gibor, the mighty God or the mighty one of God. We then have Father of Eternity. Father is Ab, but the Hebrew word is Avi, which is Father of, and Ad, which is Eternity. So Avi Ad would mean the Father of Eternity. Finally, we have Sar and Shalom. Shah is Prince or Ruler, Shalom, I'm sure you know that word. It's the Hebrew for peace. Although the Isaiah scroll from the um, Dead Sea Scroll discoveries translates this uh, final phrase slightly differently, it adds the word ha shalom. Ha meaning the. So the Masoretic text reads sha halom. The Isaiah scroll reads sha ha shalom. Prince of the peace or ruler of the peace. Now, Isaiah 9-6 was translated into Aramaic before the time of Christ. This, this translation will be known as the Targums, the, the Aramaic Targums. And interestingly, it doesn't say his name will be God the Father. It reads in Aramaic, Mighty God, He who lives forever. So, there isn't a translation out there which reads as Oneness Pentecostals claim that uh, Isaiah 9-6, Abiyad, is, is God the Father. God the Father would require the word El for God, and that's completely missing from, from, the, from that particular part of, of Isaiah 9-6. Furthermore, when it says a child is born, that's talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ. All right? Jesus Christ has two natures. He's fully God and fully man, deity and humanity. So for unto us a child is born, that's talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ. But then we read, unto us a son is given. Now that's a reference to the deity of the coming Messiah. Now there's a problem here. If it said, unto us Jesus is given, then it would still be difficult, but maybe Oneness Pentecostals could make a point that this Jesus who is given is Aviad, which they could mistranslate as God the Father. But the text doesn't say, unto us Jesus is given. It says, unto us a son is given. So here's the first big problem for Oneness Pentecostals. If you're going to insist that Isaiah 9.6 refers to Jesus being God the Father, then you've got to face up to the fact that actually what you're saying is that the Son is God the Father, which not only contradicts Trinitarian theology, it also contradicts every form of oneness theology and modalism that has ever existed. You see, oneness Pentecostals believe that Jesus is the Father, but they do not believe that the Son is the Father. They are different modes, different manifestations of the one God in oneness theology. But the text says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Son! Can this son be God the Father in oneness theology? No. So that's, uh, that's another problem. We also find that my interpretation of Isaiah 9-6 harmonizes with New Testament verses. We find that um, at John 16-28, the Father sends the Son into the world. 
We also find that at John 6.62, the Son of Man existed in heaven as the Son of Man before he then came to heaven, from heaven, to this earth. Now, these two passages harmonize with my explanation of Isaiah 9.6, that it's talking about the Son being, being coming into this world, um, the Son being the Messiah. There isn't any passage in the Bible which talks about the Father being the Messiah. This phrase, Abiad, Father of Eternity, is a Hebrew construct. Um, Ab, I said, means father, but it's in the form of Avi, which means the father of, or my father. Now, there are other examples of Hebrew construct where you have a noun and an adjective running together, okay, to give um, a, de a description of a person's name. Because in, in Hebrew, it was very important that you described the character of a person through his name. Let's look at a few Hebrew constructs. Abiasaph in 2 Samuel 23, 21, means the father of strength. Now, you find the word father used. Does that mean that this person was God the father because the word father is used? No, father of strength just means a strong man. Abitub in 1 Chronicles 8, 8 to 11, means the father of goodness. Now, hang on. Didn't Jesus say to the rich young ruler, there is, there is only one who is good, that is God. But here's someone who's the father of goodness. So he must be God the father, according to oneness logic. But you see, they're not, they're not consistent. What does Abitub mean, father of goodness? It just means someone who's good. Or, when they were christening the child, they wanted the son to be good. The parent's intention was that this person would live a good life for God. Because remember, in, in, in the Hebrew culture, your name describes your character. Abiel, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, means the father of God. So hold on, if God the father is God, then here's somebody who's the father of God the father, if you're going to take this with wooden, crass literalism. No, Abiel, the father of God, is simply a way of describing this person that, that the parents wanted him to be a godly man. Are you, are you getting this? The word father is used in a Hebrew construct to describe the character of a person, or uh, when the child was being named, the parents hope for the character of this person. Now, remember David's son, uh, Absalom, Abishalom, 1 Kings 15.2. This means the father of peace. So he, David named the child and he was hoping for peace during his reign. And he simply named his son in the hope of this expectation. Now, if, if God is the prince of peace, and you know, um, Jesus Christ in Isaiah 9, 6 is called the prince of peace. Remember I said, um, Saha Shalom, the ruler of peace or the prince of peace. But if this man... In 1 Kings 15.2, David's son is called the father of peace. Then does, does that mean that this person was Jesus? <laughs> Can you see how stupid this is? So please, let's, let's try and make some sense out of this. You can't take a crass approach to the Hebrew culture of 3,000 years ago and focus on a name. Like, Abiel means the father of God. Therefore, I'm going to apply my 21st century English logic and say, uh, if God is God, uh, then Abiel in 1 Samuel 9, 1, he's the father of God, so God has a father. Come on, folks, that's absolutely crazy. Joseph was also called a father to Pharaoh in Genesis 45, 8. Now, okay, Genesis says that Joseph was a father to, to Pharaoh. Um, we find Abiad, the father of eternity, in Isaiah 9.6. Does that mean that Joseph was God the father? Just as surely that there is as much proof that Joseph is God the father for the fact that Jesus, in Isaiah 9.6, is God the father. Now here's a very interesting point. Oneness Pentecostals um, fight 
tooth and nail saying that father is not a name, it's a title, and son is not a name, it's actually a title, with one exception, and the exception is Isaiah 9.6. When they come to Isaiah 9.6, all of a sudden, they contradict themselves, they forget what they've said in the past with regard to New Testament verses, father is not a name, my brother, father is not a name, father is a title, my brother, father is a title, it's not a name. They go to Isaiah 9, 6, and Father suddenly becomes a name. <laughs> Crazy. Absolutely contradictory. Here's another very good verse. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. It says, For this reason the Son of God was manifested. Now hold on. If Isaiah 9, 6 is talking about God the Father, it's saying that this Son who is given is God the Father, which, as I have already said, not only contradicts Trinitarian theology, it contradicts oneness theology. Then surely we'd find a verse in the New Testament which says, For this reason, God the Father was manifested in the flesh. And we don't read that. No verse says that the Father was manifested in the flesh. No verse says God the Father was manifested in the flesh. We only read that, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. We also read that the son who is given will be given the Davidic kingdom in Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, specifically in verse 7. Now, one is Pentecostals, they claim that this is talking about God the Father. I've mentioned that. This problem, error, is contradicted in Luke 1, 3, 32, where with reference to the Davidic kingdom, we read that the son of the highest will be given David's throne. And son of is a genitive. So it can't possibly refer to uh, a synonym, which is a word that represents um, a name or a person. Son of the highest literally refers to the Son of God, not to God the Father. Um, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. So this Messiah is going to be given David's kingdom. He's going to sit on David's throne. And yet Luke 1.32 says that the son of the highest will be given David's throne, not God the Father. Time is pressing upon me. Um, So I'm going to really skip quite a lot of this and just conclude with the fact that name can refer to more than one person. Genesis 48, 16, we read, uh, name in the singular is used of Abraham and Isaac, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, singular name referring to two people, Abraham and Isaac. Name is also used in the singular at Ruth chapter 1 verse 2 where the Hebrew word name which is Shem is again used in the singular but it's used to refer to two men that is Marlon and Shion, Shilon, can't pronounce it properly, sorry about that. Finally let me just conclude with this. Jesus Christ in John 14 is the way to the Father, John 14 6. He is also with the Father in John 14 7 the Father indwells him in John 14.10, and he goes to his Father in John 14.12. So he's clearly other than his Father. When he says that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father in John 14.9, he does not use the word blepo, which means to see with the eye. I can see the camera with my eye. That's the word blepo in Greek. Jesus in John 14.9 uses the word horeo, which means to understand. Like, I can understand how the bios of my camera works. I can understand how the atom works. That use of the word understand or see, I can see how the atom works, I can see how the bias of the computer works, would be horeo in Greek, and that's the word used in John 14.9. So finally, to finish with this, if Jesus were God the Father, surely he would have said so in his high priestly speech in John 14, chapter 14 to chapter 16, and he didn't. Thank you very much.